right. All right. What is going on, family? Oh, my eyebrows look a beast right now. How y'all doing, family? We are here doing a, a little quick show on Saturday. Look at my damn eyebrows, man. My shit look a beast. But I'm here. I'm here nonetheless. It's about to be the first of the month. Easter weekend, whatever. You dig? Glad to have everybody tuning in. Doing a little surprise show for Saturday. How you guys doing? Let me let everybody know that a playah is all up in here right now. Hope you guys are having a good, prosperous weekend. Few things I want to discuss right now. Sorry about that. Like, like I said, I hope you guys are having a good weekend. Let me let everybody know on um, Twitter and Facebook that I'm live right now. You dig? And let me shout out to everybody who um, contributed to the Indiegogo campaign. I really appreciate you. I really thank you. I really honor you. Shout out to my 300. I really respect how everybody gets on board with these projects, and we try our best to make the projects as thorough as possible. And also, again, i got to thank everybody for supporting the Mink Slide Project, man, I really appreciate you for that family. And also, I have to thank everybody for um, sending me emails who wanted to get involved with, um, I'm, I'm, I'm official, unofficially calling it the Underground Railroad, where we um, connect with each other to just help people in different cities like these children. And I don't want to get back too much into the topic of those children I was talking about the other day, but if there are people in need, we need to have networks of places and people who we can send them to in certain cities at a moment's notice. And there were a lot of people who hit me up and they said, hey, Tariq, I live in um, Dallas. I ain't got a lot of money, but, you know, if, you, if somebody needs help, you know, they can, I got a place for them to stay. We can feed them. And I'm like, don't worry about no money. I got that. I'll take care of that. But just to have people who are down, just to have people who are available in case we need to make a call and God forbid that we do. Hopefully, you know, I, you know, God forbid that we do. But damn, my eyebrows look a fucking beast right now, man. Damn, I'm looking at my eyebrows in the playback live. I told you I was on Instagram talking about my eyebrows, man. You dig? No, I, I put on that. Um, where's that mask? Where's uh, I might have put it? No, this I put on this. Strong fucking masks. You know, these little peel-off masks. I talked about this. I put on one of these masks, and it, it just kind of got on my eyebrow. I didn't deliberately. People are like, how come you put it on your eyebrows? I didn't deliberately put the shit on my eyebrows. Just trying to get the blackheads out of my face and ingrown hairs and all that shit. And it's one of these old... And I've had little face masks before. And I pulled this shit off, and that shit ripped my eyebrows out. I didn't get a wax the fuck out. If I got nigga, if I got my eyebrows waxed and it looked this fucked up, somebody would lose their license. You dig? But the eyebrows are not, you know, are looking real janky right now. So don't trip. Don't trip. And I don't need your goddamn judgment. Nigga, oh, well, you ain't gonna do that. You're supposed to use a mask and put it on your eyes. What you doing? I don't need your goddamn judgment. Just you know, give me some tips on how to grow these bitches back. People are like, use Jamaican castor oil, all this little shit. All right, but it is what it is. So my eyebrows are real damn janky right now. Niggas up there talking about, some people like, well, I can go, I can thread them for you. Who the fuck I look like? Naomi damn Campbell. You dig? Somebody said, yeah, I look crazy. Nigga, I don't need your judgment, my goddamn it. Argentine, I don't need your goddamn judgment. All right, black castor oil works okay. All right, I got to look into that. I got to look into that. A few things we want to just talk about a few things today. Um, before I talk, I want to talk about the Purple Rain because I, I was watching Purple Rain today. I'm gonna talk about Prince in a minute, but I I was watching Purple Rain today on BET and it made me want to want to talk about that for a minute. <laughs> they got crispy on YouTube, hilarious. But, you know, a lot of people are talking about the, the Sacramento shooting. It was another brother who was shot in North Carolina last night. 
an older black man who's like 60. The police said he had a gun and they killed his brother. So, you know, they're, they're going all out right now. Um, you know, the brother who got shot up in um, um, Sacramento, you know, it was revealed that he was he was a coon. You know, that's unfortunate. Um, Stefan, is it Stefan Clark? Thank you very much, Christopher. I respect you, brother. Thank you for that. Um, the thing about the Christopher Clark thing, not only is, you know, I, I've read some of the tweets by that Christopher, not, not Christopher Clark, by um, Stefan Clark. This dude was just talking real greasy about black folks. What's interesting about him, you know, this is why I focus on, this is why I focus on the police activity, just like with OJ. OJ's a coon, too. People will say, well, how come you support OJ? I don't support no fucking OJ. So OJ's a big time, he's a second degree coon. But I'm against race soldiers setting people up. So I'm not so much for OJ as I am against race soldiers setting people up, especially out here where I live. These race soldiers did it all the time. But not only was this Stefan Clark dude in life cooning it up, he was talking some real coon stuff, but we're going to be, we're going to have to be very honest here. And we got to be very honest here, family. What's his brother's name? The brother who's alive? His brother needs to sit his ass down somewhere. And I'm just, Savante, whatever, Stevante, whatever his name is. And I know the man, they're grieving. I know the family is going through some things. But I'm just going to put that on out there. That brother of his, running around, buck dancing and all that, he need to sit the fuck down. I'm going to just say it like it is. That brother is doing too much. He ain't helping nothing. That brother's doing way too much. That brother, is, he's using this as an opportunity to just show out and coon it up. You, you understand? I mean, he's going to the, the city council meetings and jumping on tables, dancing, yelling, and all that. I understand you, you, you lost a family member. And the thing is, this Devante dude, he knows that he's going to get a pass because his brother got shot. So people are going to chalk that up to him grieving. But I'm saying, nigga, don't use this death of your brother as an opportunity to be a buck dancing fucking coon. Because some of the shit this dude is doing is just him cooning it up. All this jumping around, dancing and yelling and all this making, just he was on stage with Sharpton. Just, just a buck in his fucking eyes. Just doing anything. Uh, shout out to Dan Mack, brother, for the, um, Melanoid Ministries, respect. But yeah, all this bucking of the eyes, brother. Uh, look, I know your brother died. I understand that. I know he was murdered. But we're going to have to be strategic. He's running in the city council meeting. Fuck this shit. Fuck all this. Fuck all this. <laughs> Say my, do y'all love me? Here in the do do y'all love me? Y'all got to. Uh, this dude is cooning at this point, dude. I, I, I'm not co-signing that shit, dude. You, you dig? And also, some of the shit he's saying in interviews, some of the stuff he's saying in interviews, well, listen to this. Hold on. Hold on. He's on CNN. This was CNN a few days ago. I felt like um, when I when I seen the video. Hold on. Yes. Is that yes, what you said? Said? yes. Yes. The, the body I, cam I video. I, 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 I never watched the video. I've never seen the video. I've and never that's... watched it on the news. I've never turned it on. Whenever I see it, people put it in their... And this he this is what rubbed me the wrong way when he said this shit right here. Hold on. And then they're in there and they're Hold on. watch the video. I don't want to see that video. Hold on. Ever. Ever. Tell me tell me about your brother. Listen Mr. to this. He was hilarious. He was like, you know, he was honestly he had to go get it by any means necessary. No. You know what I mean? He loved his children. Why would you get on TV and say that, nigga? Why would you say that? Why in the fuck would you say that on TV? Damn, y'all leave my eyebrows alone. 
people talking about my eyebrows. I know they fucked up. But when he got on there talking about, yeah, my, how was your brother? Yeah, my brother was a hustler. He had to get it any way he could. Why would you say that, you fucking idiot? Why would you say that? Dude, they'll use that as justification for killing the dude. You idiot. You sitting on TV saying that, they're digging for justification for killing him. You just got your ass on TV and gave him justification. Your brother will do anything to get, he, he, he'll, he'll, just, he'll get it any way he can. So now you saying your brother was a fucking criminal. You don't say that, dude. Come on, man. Sit down. You got to sit down. Forget about all that emotional bullshit. You got to sit down. Yeah, that's why they're giving this dude all the airtime in the world. They know he's out here just buck dancing, buck dancing. Shout out to TM Jones. Shout out to Darlene. Shout out to S. Laden. Much respect to the family. I respect you guys. Love y'all for the uh, Illinois Ministries. But this is why they're giving this dude so much airtime. And oh, Lord, Benjamin Crump, Lord. When I was in Miami, I was listening on, you know, listening to the radio out there in Miami. They had a bunch of Benjamin Crump ads. I'm like, oh, my God. They got Benjamin Crump, Lord. You know, it's the fuckery ensues. But this dude is wilding, dude. And they, they, they love that nigga. They're going to keep the camera on him so he can keep on wilding. So they can keep justifying harming the, the the brother. You understand? And here's where's this other video where he's all oh, he ran into the city council meeting and he's Remember? all jumping on tables. Let me play that in a second. He's all jumping around and it's just real, real. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen to this. Hold on. Hold on, wait. No, 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 please, please. Hold on. Sacramento, y'all love me? Yes. I said, do y'all love me? Yes. Does the city love me? No. I need, I need y'all to say it louder. Love you. Okay, if y'all really love me. Well, okay, why is this nigga, yeah, Sacramento, y'all love me? He act like he doing a concert now. This nigga's acting like Lil Uzi Vert. He's running around, dancing. I mean, look, bucking his eyes. Y'all love me? Y'all love me? Got to get that body count down. Y'all love me? That ain't about your brother, man. That's about you just using that as an opportunity to be a fucking coon. Come on, man. Sit down. Sit the fuck down, man. Damn. This ain't about grieving no more. Some people grieve differently. No. Some people coon differently, and that nigga's cooning right now. Sit down, my dude. Sit down. Sit the fuck down, dude. You fucking it up for everybody. Sit down. God damn. Seems like coonery ran through the family, didn't it? This is, this is some shit to get attention for this dude. He, this is for him to get attention. Now he's using this as an opportunity to get attention. Sit down, my dude. I know people ain't... Because y'all waiting on that big payoff. See, he's showing out because they there's some money coming. They got Benjamin Crump. And so, they, so there's going to be a payout. Somebody's going to get some money. So this nigga's already getting his coon shoes ready. He's breaking in the coon shoes. He's already practicing his tap dancing. So when the check come... You dig? It's not about justice no more. It's about let me just show out until the check comes so I can practice my my showing out. And then when that check comes, I'm going to be all forgiving. No, we got to get off that bullshit. Understand, 48 hours after the brother was shot, they, and they shot him in the back and all this old shit, you know, the normal, usual, usual. You got to understand this. The police union out there gave 
the DA a donation of like thirteen thousand dollars. Forty eight hours after um, um, Stephon Clark got killed, the police union gave a donation to the DA. That's why they didn't file charges. It's the money thing. You got to understand how money works. You understand? These people are all in with each other. They one hand washes the other. And it's those police unions. Those are the main culprits. I'm telling you, family, it's those police unions. You got to look into those police unions. There's, they, they start throwing money at certain people like, hey, keep that mouth shut. Hey, don't file no charges. Those pol we got to look in those police unions. One hand scratches the other. One, uh, one hand washes the other, rather. But I saw something the other day. Well, this week, there was a couple of white dudes who killed police officers. One, I, I can't think of where it is. One white dude stabbed a damn police chief in the face with a knife. Got arrested and got put in jail. Another dude ambushed a police officer. I can't think of what city that's in. That happened a couple of days ago. They got that dude. And we see these contrasting videos. Shout out to Guard of Lion. Much respect, brother. Shout out to everybody putting some on the Melanoid Ministry. Shout out to Laura Soracis. Much respect to you, beloved. We love you. We respect you. Thank you for the Melanoid Ministries tithing. But we, we see these videos of these white suspects just doing all types of shit to the police. Uh, I saw one video the other day. This white dude was the cop. Stop, I'll shoot you. He's beat, beating the cop up. The white dude about to jump in his car, hitting the cop some more, about to jump back. I mean, the cop, you better, the cop just standing there warning him. You better stop it. You better stop it. You better stop it. Fucking get off, he fucking did. Nothing. They won't shoot him. And people talk about the double standard. You, well, you know why there's really a double standard. The reason why, there's, you know, we live in a system of white supremacy. That's one thing. But the reason why these police officers will not kill a lot of white people, especially unarmed white people, in large numbers, is really because one reason. White people do not have a history of allowing people or they don't have a modern history of allowing people to mistreat them for so long. They got over that shit during the Inquisition. White people, they realize, after the Inquisition, we can't let people systematically mistreat us for long periods of time. We'll die out. So they know, for their own survival, they have to immediately fight back. So the reason why these race soldiers, they will not kill white suspects because white people will start shooting cops left and right. They do it already. White people shoot cops left and right. White people shoot cops just because they're agitated about getting pulled over. Is this fucker pulling me over? Give me my fucking sawed off. White people don't play around. The average white citizen don't play around when it comes to them being systematically mistreated. They don't play around with that. They'll do an ambush like it's nothing. That's why the cops don't fuck with them like that because if the cops just kept shooting people over and over again. Well, I'll give you an example. Like the brother, the black police officer in Minnesota who shot that white lady. Now, you know they immediately put charges on him. But before they put charges on him, he was a Muslim. He's a Somalian Muslim. The I think the day after he shot that white woman, some vigilante white people start planting bombs and shooting up mosques out there in Minnesota immediately. Look into that. They start targeting mosques out there in Minnesota right after that cop did that. Some white supremacists went after some of those mosques. They retaliate immediately. They immediately retaliate. That's why the police ain't going to really go at them in large numbers, even when the suspect is fighting. Because white people will immediately fight back. They'll put their lives on the line. They will put their lives on the line for their children. They're like, look, 
If they're going to start doing this, well, let me do this. Let me sacrifice myself for my children. And I'm going to go out here and ambush these fuckers so that my children will be safe. That's their mentality. That's why so many white people, they kill police officers all the time. While they're talking about black identity, extremists, and all that, the 90% of police officers who get killed are killed by white people. White people kill cops like it's nothing. Like the Clive and Bundys, they'll draw down on them cops at the drop of a hat. White folks, they don't even like to be pulled over. How dare you pull me over for a traffic stop? How dare you? That's their mentality. How dare you pull me over for my traffic signal not being on long enough? I'm going to kill you. When you come to my car, I'm going to shoot the shit out of you. You dig? That's their mentality, so they don't get fucked with like that. They'll sacrifice themselves for their freedom. You understand? Black folks, we, we've learned how to live like roaches. We've learned how to live. We, we say, okay, living like a fucking roach is okay. We'll live in the gutter. We'll live in filth. We'll, we'll live in the, under the thumb of violence and the threat of violence. And, you know, we'll just pray it away. You understand? But, you know, them showing, they released video that the, the race soldiers who killed um, Alton Sterling, you know, they, they finally announced that they're not going to file charges. Then they released the video showing that the dude, they did, they planned on killing Alton Sterling anyway. They were going to kill him. Then they did this whole bullshit where they fired the, the race soldier. They fired them. And you know the rules. Race soldiers don't get fired. They only get transferred. So that's his punishment. His punishment is he's going to get transferred. So they gave you the illusion of them doing something. They're not doing nothing. And they're not going to do anything. You understand? Not going to do shit. All right. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about the movie Purple Rain. I was talking about Purple Rain. I'm going to talk about... I was looking at... um. Purple Rain on um, BET came on today. And it was one of my favorite movies as a kid. How many of you guys have not seen Purple Rain by Prince? This is a good movie. Good movie. Very good movie. And um, I, I used to see it as a kid all the time. Because, you know, Morris Day. When I saw Morris Day with the suits and he was spitting all that game, I'm like, I want to be that nigga. So that movie was very influential on me. Especially with the Morris Day character. Morris Day. See, I wanted to be like Prince at first. As a kid. Prince and Michael Jackson, they were the shit. So I was a huge Prince fan. And then when Morris Day popped on the screen, I'm like, oh, that's the shit right there. He's cooler than Prince. You never saw Purple Rain? You gotta see Purple Rain. Very good movie. Now, Prince is kind of moist in the movie. When you look at it, now he's doing some real moist shit. <laughs> Prince is doing a lot of hella moist shit in the movie. But, you know, he could get away with that because you know, Prince was knocking down the baddies back then. He was knocking down some bad ones. But I wanted to be like Prince as a small child. You know, when Prince had the... Because Prince had the ladies. Anybody who can get the ladies, the ladies like Prince. So, you know, we wanted to do shit that the ladies like. And one of my neighbors who lived a few doors down from me Girl named Sharon. She was she was a tall sister. She was in the same grade as me. Went to the same school. Went to the same middle school. And Sharon was a tall chick. And Sharon had a trench coat. And I was like, Sharon, let me borrow your fucking trench coat. I would Sharon would let me borrow her trench coat. I would get an S curl because my mother wouldn't let me get a perm like Prince, and I didn't have enough hair. So the best I could do, I could get an S curl and kind of flip that shit to the side to kind of look like almost a perm, but it just looked like just a, a fucked up wet relaxer. <laughs> but I would get that fucking S curl and put on Sharon's coat, that trench coat, like Prince pop those collars up and go to school and start macking. 
to my damn seventh grade classmates. Like, bitch, don't you see this overcoat? Why? You're not cooperating with me. You did? But I was a, that's that's how much of a huge Prince fan I was. But then when I saw Morris Day, I'm like, shit. He's spitting, got them suits, and talking about Stacey Adams. Like, that nigga's killing the game. So then we started getting suited and booted. We started getting the suits and the, the tie. We had the leather tie with the tie bar. Man, that's why if y'all see old pictures of me back in high school, I got on suits and shit and my fucking S curl and shit. Man. Yeah, Morris Day had us getting suited and booted. But, you know that's how the movie Purple Rain, it was so influential on the culture. And I, I was looking at Purple Rain, a lot of stuff I didn't catch as a kid watching the movie that I'm catching now, now that I'm more woke. I'm watching Purple Rain today. And, you know, in the movie they have Purple Rain, uh, not Purple Rain, they have Prince's dad, or somebody playing his dad. Hold on one second, let me, let me show y'all something. And the movie's based on, loosely based on Prince's life. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, the movie's loosely based on Prince's life. And I know his dad was a musician. He was supposed to have um, Vanity in the movie, but Vanity, she tried to get another movie, so she, she turned that one down. But, um... They got Apollonia. You dig? Hold on one second. Let me see something. I'm trying to find something. All right. Y'all bear with me. I'm, I'm trying to find something. So in the movie, I'm looking at it, and it, it shows Prince's father. He's like this abusive black man. And in the movie... Let me see if y'all can. Let me let me see if I can show y'all this. I'm gonna put this up on the screen if it gets over here fast enough. All right. Let me put some. So in the movie, Prince's mother was a white lady. In Purple Rain, I'm looking at it and I, it dawned on me. I'm like, wait a minute, the woman is white. Let me show y'all a screenshot of her. I think her name is Olga something. That's the woman who played her. Hold on, where is it? Where is it? Come on, man. I hate when I can't find shit on time. When I'm doing shit, I'm talking. I'm doing it on the fly. Uh, come on, God damn it. Oh, there we go. All right. So this is um the man who played. They played Prince's dad and Prince's mom right here. All right. He played. That's a brother from the Mod Squad. He played Prince's dad, and that's. I wish I had a better picture of her, but that, that was Prince's mom. This is the white lady. She's in the movie. She's a white lady. Now, in real life, Prince's mother is black. A lot of people, even today, think that Prince is biracial. Prince has two black parents. Prince is not biracial. The, the woman, Lily White, in the movie. Wait, Prince's mom. Hold on one second. Let me take this down. All right. Hold on one second. Uh, so Prince's mom is a um, black lady. That that's that's Prince's real mom right here, Maddie Shaw. That's that's Prince's real mom. This is this is this way. That's Miss Maddie Shaw. I think she died back in 2000, 2002. But that's Prince's real mother, Miss Maddie Shaw. So Prince, both the Prince's parents were black. That's Prince's mother right here. That's Maddie Shaw. Both of Prince's parents are black. Now, some people were saying, because I was talking about this on Instagram, they were like, well, damn, was Prince Coonan? I don't, that, I think that was a Warner Brother decision. A lot of folks don't know, when they did Purple Rain, that was a gamble. Yeah, a lot of people thought that Prince was biracial. Prince is not biracial. Both of his parents are black. But they put a white woman in the movie as his mother. And I think that that's, that was Warner Brothers' decision. When they wanted to do Purple Rain, understand, Prince was, you know, thorough in the music game. But Prince wasn't, you know, this was his first movie thing. That was something new for basically still kind of an R&B artist. 
he was crossing over, but Prince was pretty much an R&B artist dabbling in, 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 in pop. But Prince wasn't a shot caller back then. He couldn't go into a movie studio and say, hey, I want this. He couldn't go in there and make demands. Understand that. So they were taking a gamble with Prince. So he couldn't really go in there and make any kind of demands. But when he came with them for the idea of Purple Rain, okay, they, they gave it the green light. And Warner Brothers, they were going to get John Travolta to play Prince. This is how fucked up Warner Brothers was. They were going to get John Travolta to play him. And the director and Prince was like, hell fucking no. Hell no. So they were going to get a white dude to play Prince if they if they didn't fight to... Yeah, I'm dead serious. Look that up. I'm not even bullshit. Look that up. I, I swear they were. Look that up. They were going to get John Travolta to play Prince. You understand? That's how much they were with the bullshit. So I, I, I believe it was Warner Brothers' decision to put the mom as white so it wouldn't be a black movie. You understand? Because the thing is, if you have, and, and movies are real funny like that. When you have a black female and a black male parent in the movie, and they have a black child, to them, that's going to translate as a black film. They didn't want it to be a black film. You understand? They did not want that to be a black film. They do that now with films. It's like a lot of movies with Will Smith, they'll have him with a Latina. You, you understand? But they did not want to make that a black film. So they had the, the mother white, the dad black. You know, they had a an androgynous looking woman, um, Apollonia. You didn't know what race she was, so they, they didn't want to make it too black. You understand? That's my gardener outside. If y'all hear that noise, my gardener's out there. He comes here on the weekend, so he's making a lot of Yeah, that's my gardener. He's making a lot of noise. He, he'll be looking and doing that. Sorry, Mr. Nachi. But. And Prince was a genius. Man, I was a big, huge fan of Prince. And Prince was a fan of our work, too. He was a fan of Hidden Colors. Prince would put people up to Hidden Colors. Someone said, I got my tail cutting grass. Hilarious. But yeah, Warner Brothers made those decisions. Warner Brothers made those decisions. Yeah, he was not by race. But yeah, they, even now, they don't want, they don't like to have, if Two black couples are in a movie, a black woman and a black man. They just write that off as that's a black movie. That's a black movie. And now Vanity was in it. Now Vanity is biracial. Vanity is biracial. And Vanity, you know, she just looked like a cute black chick. But Vanity was low key a coon. Vanity said some real cooner shit one time on, um, I think, the Arsenio show. I think it was the um, Arsenio show where she said some real cooner shit and black folks really tripped out on her about that. And she said something about her dad is black so she liked gorillas or some shit like that. And black folks was like, whoa. Yeah, so then it was, you know, see, it, black, back, black folks really backed up off of her after saying that. I want to see if I can find that clip. Right now, here's one of my favorite ladies. I've, I've been having a, a lot of wonderful says. ladies all week. Hold on, let me see if she's. This, this. Hold on. Let me see if this is it. Oh, let me see this shit. Huh? 
Okay, that I'm trying to find it. I'm trying to do a lot of shit on the fly. But there's a clip. I can't find it now. I'm just doing things on the fly. But there's, she was on, a, I think, the Arsenio show where she said something about she liked gorillas because her dad is black. There was some shit that black people like. Man, if you don't get the fuck out of here, you dig? Well, look at where Vanity is now. No, I, don't, I, I, I ain't caping on one because she died. Yeah, she became a minister and all that stuff, but, you know, that rubbed people the wrong way. And also, before that, Vanity, before Purple Rain, Vanity was in a movie up there in Canada, some crazy-ass movie where she was stranded on a, a, a deserted island and she was fucking some kind of ape creature. It was real. So she, she, she was a tragic mulatto. And it was a movie where she ended up fucking some... Bigfoot type of creature. It was some. Sh the white people had her and said all types of shit. You dig? Yeah, yeah. She was on the narcotic heavy. Yeah, she was on the narcotic big time. She was on the narcotic big time. Tanya's Island. Yeah, that was the name of the movie. Tanya. Y'all look up Tanya's Island. It was a real weird ass movie where she's in it. She's on an island and she's is some gorilla. She's fuck. It's they didn't they had her in some bullshit, dude. So that you know. So that's where her mind was. But um, Morris Day's still doing his thing. But that's why Prince created at the time. Prince he didn't want to be boxed in as just the average R and B funk artist. He wanted to. He did funk, then he dabbled in pop and dabbled in like punk rock. So Prince dabbled in different genres. So because he knew how the record labels would just kind of railroad the funk and R and B artists a certain way. So that's why he dabbled around in different genres. And he created the time specifically as a funk band. Because remember, Prince wrote all the times early shit, all the the hit records that the time had, all that funky. Um, Get it up, seven 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 ninety three eleven, all that stuff. That was um, Prince. He wrote all that. As a matter of fact, when that first album, Prince was basically singing everything. He played all the instruments and he sang everything. And Morris sang on top of him. Same thing with um, Sheila E. On Sheila E's song, because Sheila said, yeah, "I'm not a singer," but what what Prince did, he produced the music, sang it, and then had Sheila E. sing over him. That's why when you hear it, you hear his voice in it. Yeah, he, he had all these different names. But Prince was a genius as far as that. And that thing where, you know, Prince wouldn't do interviews, you know, and that, that created a mystery around him. But the thing is, the reason why he did that, he, he didn't do interviews, was because he was hella shy. And he was on, um, his first interview on television was on American Bandstand. He did, um, I think he performed I Want to Be Your Lover. And then Dick Clark tried to interview him and Prince basically froze. And Prince was real embarrassed about that because I think he was hella fucking shy when he first started out. He was real, 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 real shy. And Prince was, you know, after you do a song, they interview you and Dick Clark was like, hey, so I heard you play a lot of instruments. How many instruments you play? Prince was like, I mean, that nigga was freaking the fuck out. And many of his people say, well, Prince was such a control freak, he got into a situation where he wasn't in control. See, that's the thing. Prince lived in Minneapolis. So Prince, he basically isolated himself. Prince was a very isolated dude. He isolated himself in the studio. So he was just, you know, by himself all the time in a setting where he could control everything outside of that setting where somebody else is in control. That shit would freak him the fuck out. You did? I'm going to talk about that Miami thing tomorrow. I'm going to break that down. The Miami interview, I'm breaking that down tomorrow on Sunday show. But yeah, look up the American Bandstand interview with Prince. He freaked out. You did? But but it worked out for him. He told all his people, hey, no interviews for me. I ain't that ain't gonna happen no more. I ain't doing no more interviews. So what that did, that created a mystery around him, which worked out in his favor. That made him this big mystic artist. 
But just the fact that behind the Purple Rain, you know, Warner Brothers, you know, they didn't want it too black. They gave him a white mother. And for, for years, even to this day, people think that Prince is biracial. And they don't know that nigga's family is black. Then a motherfucker, black as hell. And Prince was a very awakened dude. He knew what the, the game was. He knew what was up. And he was very savvy about his business. He, he was a dude. He was very savvy about his business. And he knew, he knew how to you know, diversify groups. He, he got into these contracts and he would create all these different groups. Like Vanity Six was basically him. The Time was basically him. The Family, it was a group called The Family, that was basically him. And then he'd just get people to, to, to front the songs. Very intelligent dude. He knew how to work the game. You dig? Oh yeah, fabulous and his girlfriend, um, um, Erica. That's her name, Evelyn. What, what's what's fabulous's girlfriend's name? And you know they're gonna have a field day with that. By the way, you know they they showing the abusive black man. And again, when you look at Purple Rain, look at that. Look at the thing where. They had the dad, the black dad, abusing, because in the movie, the dad was beating the mom. So you had this black dad beating the white mother. So that played on a lot of racial stereotypes that white people like to see, or white supremacists. They like to see that. They like to see black people, black males beating up on white women because that helps them justify their stereotypes. You understand? And when Purple Rain came out, that was the thing. In the 80s, there was a resurgence of the black brute image, the abusive black man image. That was really coming back into the mainstream in the 80s, showing that violent, crazy Negro beating on women. You know, you got it in Purple Rain. Around the same time, the movie A Color Purple came out, they were doing the same thing. These old abusive niggas, Mr. and raping the kids and all that. So they were really getting on that abusive black man thing, heavy. Yeah, the brute Negro image. And now that's, they're, they're making that come back again. You, you did? But, um, you know, the, the thing with Fabulous and um, Emily, you know, they need to just charge that to the game. How long have they been together? They've been together, what, for, how long have they been together? Sometimes people just need to charge shit to the game. When it gets to that point, just charge that to the game. Just let it go. I know y'all been together, you got history, but when it gets to that point, it's time to charge it to the game. My thing is when, what's my mom doing? Hold on, hold on one second. Hold on one second. My mom is here. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Ah, come on, mom. I'm doing a live broadcast right now. What's going on? Come on, say hi to everybody. Oh, okay. You brought me a, some food from the thing? I did. There you go. My mom brought me some. Let me see what you got in there. Oh, snap. Hold on. Say what's up, mom. On. What's up, everybody? <laughs> There you go, there you go, that's you, there you oh, go. okay. Man, how's everybody at the thing? Oh, good, at everything went, went so well. Cool. There were so many people. Oh, okay. it's packed up there? Yeah, it was outstanding. Cool, cool. Is my gardener still out there? Yeah, he's still out there. Okay. And I'm getting ready to go home and rest my back. Okay. <laughs> were you standing up all day? I, you know, okay. I, I went to bed like 2.30 because I cooked. Oh, okay, I was about to say, yeah. what you doing at 2.30? You know, I was cooking. <laughs> the <so>. tweet niggas? <laughs> <laughs> Gnarly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know nobody like that. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you in a minute, Okay, right. see you later. All right. All right. That is mom's. Mom, oh, I'm about to tear this shit up, yo. Oh, some man, some um, dressing, mac and cheese. Oh, hells yeah. My mama biscuits. Man. No, hell no, it ain't vegan. It's big. You think this is vegan? <laughs> a big ass piece of chicken is vegan if the chicken was eating vegetables. 
Oh man, they had a little Easter thing. So it's about to be popping. Mm -hmm. Man, man, man. Oh yeah. What's wrong with my eyebrow? I'm not about to explain my eyebrow um, um, situation. I'm not going to explain that. I'm not about to explain. What's up, woke video? What's up? Shout out to MCLMP305, man. Good. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you. Much respect to you. I appreciate you for the Melanoid Ministries. Appreciate that. So your mom turned 70 in February 2026. That's what's up. But, um, yeah, but like I was talking about, Fab and Emily, they need to charge that to the game, man. When, when you get into a situation where, you know, you got to get the police involved and all that, and so it's just time to let shit go. It's time to let things go. When, when the police has to get involved, you, that's it. If y'all get to that point, it, it should be nipped in the bud even before it gets to that, gets to that point. But when you... People are calling the police on each other. That's that's it. That is it, man. It's a wrap. That is it. When the police come, the relationship is over. You dig? Because if it's gotten that bad, either I'm doing something fucked up or you being fucked up. And we don't need to be together. Yeah, yeah, we talked about that earlier, Woke, about Stefan Clark's brother just really, really, really doing the most. But um, like I said, Emily B's father's situation was the worst. What happened with her father? Oh, yeah, you know, TMZ, they have a field day with that. Oh, yeah, Melanoid Nation. Everybody can go to MelanoidNation.org, by the way, MelanoidNation.org. Elevation Allah. You can go to melanoidnation.org. Yeah, you know, the white supremacists, they're mad at me for talking about that. Um, what's up, Nicolette Davis? Respect to you. Thank you so much. Um, some of the white supremacists were mad at me for calling out, you know, the Roseanne's rating. Roseanne is playing herself, which is a Trump supporter on her new show, and it got a lot of ratings. That's because you have a lot of white supremacists out here. Simple and plain. You got a lot of white supremacists out here, and they identify with that. That's what the game is. You got a bunch of them, and the white supremacists, they bring in some money. Now, you know, it's interesting. Laura Ingram. They, um, Laura Ingram is, um, she's going to take a break on her show next week because a lot of her advertisers are falling out or leaving her because she was talking greasy about those white kids who got killed. And they are immediately pulling out. They are pulling out like crazy. And like I said the other day, they wanted me to be on Laura Ingram's show. When I was down in Miami, they wanted me to be on the show. And the thing is, this just shows you people in the dominant society, they know how to get things done if they want to get it done. They know how to shut things down if they wanted to shut it down. Understand this. If they wanted the police to stop murdering us, people in the dominant society would make it happen. They know what to do. They know exactly what to do. They know how to stop it. They know who to target. They know how to target them. You dig? Hold on. You on your way home. Yeah, they know how to target folks. They know what to do. What's up, Sir Isaac? Respect to you. But if they wanted to shut it down, they could shut it down. They're not helpless. They act helpless, helpless when it comes to you. 
They act like they don't know how to stop these brutal killings, and they, they act like they don't know how to do it because they want it to continue. They want it to go on. Understand, they need it to go on because if they stop these race soldiers from harming us, well, they won't be able to have us in check, and that's what they need. They need the race soldiers to keep us in check. That's what this is about, the race soldiers keeping us in check. Because the white supremacists, they think about their offspring. They, they understand, okay, in order for my offspring, my little white babies, to thrive and be all right, we need to have the police keep these Negroes in check so these Negroes will not jeopardize us getting our unearned goodies. That's the mentality of the average white supremacist. And you think a white supremacist has to be all in your face yelling nigga, 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 nigga. You understand? That ain't what it's about. They're all about passing down resources to their offspring. That's what it's all about. I'm going to talk. What's up, baby girl? Thank you for the Melanoid Ministries um, tithing. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. I'm going to break down that Miami interview tomorrow on tomorrow's Sunday show, on the regular show. This is a special show today. Oh, you you met my mom down in Atlanta? Yeah, my mom would come to my lectures down in Atlanta. She, yeah, my mom is wonderful, man. My mom, y'all see my mom. My mom, that's who I grew up with. My mom is absolutely phenomenal. That's why I grew up all right. And, you know, I was lucky to have a mother who was phenomenal. My mom was the shit. She's always been the shit. I had never seen my mom on no lazy bullshit. I've never seen my mom just, just laying up, chilling in the bed. I've never seen that as a kid growing up. You understand? that? That's something. When you, you grow up with parents, my mother worked every fucking day. Well, besides the weekend. And even on the weekend, she wasn't just laying around. She didn't get up and do shit. But the women in my life, my mother and my grandmother, I've never seen them just laying up in the bed. The only time I saw my grandmother laying up in the bed is on her deathbed. That's the only time. And she, she was on her deathbed for damn near two years. She didn't want to check out. My grandma was tough. But I didn't grow up around women just laying around on some bullshit. Yeah, yeah, my dad. But do I know my dad? What kind of shit is that? It's your little white supremacist ass. My dad, look at my Instagram. My dad was over here not too long ago. My dad was here at the house last month. But, you know, I, I, my mom... You know, she she worked. wasn't on no lazy shit. My mom got up, did her thing. Whereas now, you know, you got niggas who grow up, and your mom is at home all day watching BT with you. You understand? You got dudes who grow up. The mom is at the club with you. You got people, you know, I was just down in Miami. You had these little ratchets walking around with their little ashy butt cheeks out with the kids with them. They had they out here thirst trapping for niggas and they got the little kids with them. Out there thirst trapping on the stroll down in Miami with coochie and titties out. I'm like, and the poor kids are going, what the fuck? My God. But the thing is, it's a lot of trolls in here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to mod some people up. Hold on one second. There's a lot of trolls in here. Hold on. Let me mod some people up. Y'all bear with me. I got to mod up some folks. All right. If I can, hold on one second. Let me mod up a couple of people before you know we keep we go on. And everybody, y'all should be following me on Instagram at Tariq Elite. You need to follow me on Twitter at Tariq Nasheed, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Where's my chat room? I can't see nothing. All right. Where's my chat room? I can't see nothing. I can't mod y'all up because I can't see you. All right. 
Hopefully I can see you guys. Band, band Carmen, she's a bed wench. Who is Carmen? Let me see some familiar names in here. Where, where are my familiar people? Where's my 300? Where's my 300? Let me see who we got. I, I already got woke video. He's, he's modded up. Let me see. Where, where's my 300? Who's already, who's in here a lot? Uh, let me see. Is that B intellectual? Aren't you in here a lot? Let me see. Trolls are in here heavy. Let me see who we got. Let me see who we got. Okay, we got Charm in here. Charm is in here. She's already modded up. James Earl Moan should be in here. Let me see. But I got to find some names that's, that's, um, that's familiar already. How long have I been on? How, how long have I been on? What, what, 30, 45 minutes? Something like that. I'm not going to be on too, too long. What's a lot of y'all in here right now? I'm talking what? Um, There's so many of y'all checking in. Erica J. Let me see. All right, Elevation Allah. Let me make Elevation Allah a mod. Hold on. Where are you at, brother? Add mod. Hold on. Where are you at, Elevation Allah? Because I know my man visited Black Houston. He's in here a lot. Where are you at? There you go. Add mod. Okay, so you should be a mod, Elevation Allah. All right. Okay. Shout out to Progress Maker. Richard Norman, he's in here. So we got we got a few in here. They coming in here. We got a few in here. Right, we got a few in here. What's up, Miss Love? How are you, beloved? Let me make Miss Love a mod. Hold on. Let me make Miss Love a mod. Hold on. Okay. This shit is acting funny. Come on, Miss Love. Damn, I'm trying to make you a mod, Miss Love, and this thing is freezing up on me. All right, shit. All right. All right, so we should be good to go. We should be good to go. I might take phone calls tomorrow. What's up, Libby P. Libby P. That's a hell of a name. But yeah, on tomorrow's broadcast, Sister Tubman, okay, I got to make you a mod, Sister Tubman. I didn't know that I did not have you as a mod already. Where are you at? Hold on one second. Hold on, Sister Tubman. Um, did y'all see the dude who, um, that brother who finessed the people at Howard University, um, Tyrone Hankerson or something like that? I saw him... Um, What's up, JD? <laughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry, guys. He did an interview um, with um, with Roland Martin. Did you steal the money? <laughs> they didn't dug Roland Martin's ass up. I guess Roland used some of his boule contacts over at Howard to get the interview with him. And boy, that dude, he was talking and finessing. Boy, he was spitting. But he was talking his way about that shit. He had a little lisp on him. The nigga had a little bitty lisp. But he was talking his way up out of it. You know, him and Roland. They said that you took the money. Well, what a, I said, oh shit. <laughs> he had a little list, but I right. he's a cool brother. But other than the finessing thing. You, you did. <laughs> Alright, dude. Alright. What's up, the moon RA? Be good to catch me live. That's what's up. Shout out to shout out to Alicia. You can mod you. Let me mod you then, Alicia. I'm going to mod. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. I got to mod you from my other thing. Hold on, hold on, Alicia. I'm going to mod you right now, Alicia. This thing is going so fast. Hold on. 
I'm about to mod you right now, Alicia. If I can stop making this thing go so fast. All right, Alicia, I just modded you. Um, Sister Tubman, can you type something in the chat room so I can see you and mod you real quickly? Sister Tubman, I need you to type something so that I can mod you in here real quickly. Man, what's up, Tampa? Shout out to my brothers out there in Tampa. Um, shout out to my Hawaii people. I got to go to Hawaii. I'm going to, I got to go to Hawaii for about a week. Oh, there you go, Sister Tubman. I got to go to Hawaii so that I could finish writing the rest of the Mink Slide album. I got to really get out there so I can concentrate. Yeah. I got to be in an environment where I can really concentrate. I'm going to do that. Um, possibly next week. Come on. Damn it. I'm trying to mod you up, Sister Tubman, and this thing is really acting funny. There you go. Uh, hopefully, I just I did it. Hopefully, I did it. Oh, man. It says, how do you donate? There's a dollar sign right there. Yeah, the album is not quite finished. There's a few more songs I got to knock out. I got to get them organized, but I just got to concentrate. I got to really concentrate. So I need to I'm gonna probably go to Hawaii for like a week and just get it knocked out. I wanted to do some, get some things knocked out when I was down in Miami, but I was just, I was doing so many interviews down there. But I want to really get it knocked out. Where are my people who work in radio? Where are my folks who work in radio? It's speaking of finessing, this is why we got to have some real good connections where we're not dealing with a bunch of janky ass people that's just out here looking for a way to finesse. If I need my cats out here, I want to hire one of you cats who are in the, who's, who knows radio promotion because we were, when we put out the Mink Slide single, the first debut single, I hired this janky nigga. I'm going to give you his name. His name is Art Washington, and I hope you're listening, Art, because you're full of shit. You're janky, and you don't need to be in business. And I try to do business with, 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 with black entrepreneurs, and I don't. When you start finessing, and you bullshitting, and you fucking around, and you, you, don't need to, you don't need to be in the mix. People need to know who you are, but I'm putting this nigga's name out there. This one dude who we're going to try to work the record in, at the college level and, you know, put them on out to the, just, just get everything out. Just get everything out to radio before the song was released so that we could get those extra spins. Because I'm, when we were working on the single and putting it out, you know, that first week has to come in heavy. You got to be hard. That first week got to come in heavy. And if that dude, this nigga would have did what he was, was supposed to do. We could have made that record, It's Time, come in at number one. That's I was aiming for a number one spot. It peaked at number eight on the iTunes charts, and it peaked at number three on the Google Play charts. But we could have got that thing to number one because we were getting a couple of mix show DJs playing it here and there, but just by... Word of mouth, the song got up on the, the iTunes and Google Play charts. Just by word of mouth. And people liking the song and people streaming the song. You understand? And all we needed, you know, I wanted somebody, and I thought about it at the last minute. You know, I wanted somebody to go into, hit just hit radio quickly, somebody who kind of knew how to hit radio and send it to radio, so at least we can get a couple of college spins, a couple of local spins here or there, just, you know, to really get it to the number one spot. And I, I got this one Negro who really didn't do shit, just got the money, I gave this nigga some paper, and this nigga didn't do shit. I mean, just nothing. And, you know, shit like that. We can't do janky business like that, black folks. We cannot do janky ass business. I did touch on Purple Rain. I talked about it. 
You can get it played on KTSU in Houston. That's what's up. But I want a radio. I need a, a radio promotion guy who knows how to work an R and B record. My and a lot of my people that I know, like Nipsey, he hit me to one guy who who works some of his records. But most people I know are rappers. The dude who finessed me is Art Washington. That's his name. If you ever see that nigga's name, as far as promotion or nothing, don't fuck with him. Art Washington. That's that nigga's name. If you see that nigga, don't fuck with him. You digging? I know he's listening. I know you listening, my nigga. You know, I don't fuck with you at all. I don't appreciate it. And, and, and by the way, I got my paper back because all I did was just, you know, when, when niggas finesse me, I'm going to hit up the, the credit card company and be like, hey, reverse that fucking payment. I ain't, this nigga ain't about to, he finessed me, but he didn't finesse me because I got my paper back. Let's be very clear. I, I ain't going to just let the nigga roll off with my paper. I know you're listening, nigga. I know that, that reverse payment fucked you up. But just my time, that's my thing. I got my paper back. I wasn't about to let that nigga just sit up there with a couple of thousand dollars in my paper and not do nothing. That wasn't going to happen. But just the fact that this nigga fucked up the timing of everything. Because I could have got this. We could have got his time to the number one spot, man. Easily. Easily. We could have got that shit to the number one spot. All we needed was a couple of more spins in radio. That's all we needed. And... I'm doing this shit myself. I'm up here doing the radio thing and getting it on radio myself. I'm like, what the fuck am I hiring you for? If I'm I'm out here walking the record into radio stations and they're playing it, I got to do the shit. What the fuck am I hiring you for? You dig? That's my thing. I can do it, but damn, I I can't do everything. That's why I'm, I, I hire a nigga who can do that. Yeah, but just the fact that the time was wasted... And we couldn't hit that first week like we were supposed to because of this little dusty ass Vanessa nigga. And we got to get off that finessing shit, just like that nigga at Howard. These little grimy niggas just sitting around trying to look for ways to finesse and don't do nothing. That shit is corny. We got to cut that shit out and expose these niggas. So we'll know who to work with and who not to work with. We're going to have to expose the fuckery. We're going to cut that shit out. People saying they're going to do shit and don't do it, get money, and then just run off. And that's that janky prom Yeah, janky promoter all day. He's the epitome of a janky promoter. You dig? The epitome of a janky promoter. Yeah, that janky promoter shit, that's going to have to go. That janky promoter thing is just going to have to go. Because we need to build out here. We need to get some stuff popping and we need to build. You finesse them over there. Don't finesse us. And we're trying to get some shit built so we can get a network of things going on. That's my thing. I want to create a network where we control it. I want to create a whole network where we can control it. That's why I'm bringing so many people in the studio with us working on this project to get them out there too. We're going to get a network of things going with this music thing. You dig? Yeah, we need a network. We need to, a whole list of janky ass niggas so we can know who not to rock with. Man. Who's, who put that 25 on? Shout out to, um, who was that? Shout out to Sugar Crisp. Shout out to Sugar Crisp. That's a hell of a name, but shout out to you. Yeah, Ice Cube did a movie about janky promoters. And speaking of Ice Cube, they, they love Ice Cube in Miami. I was down in Miami, and they were bumping Ice Cube shit like crazy in Miami, man. Every other song was an Ice Cube song down there. They love Ice Cube in Miami. You did Now, listen, y'all, because what y'all doing, y'all y'all naming just one or two radio stations. I want somebody, shout out to Resident Atheist, shout out to you. I want one person who can do multiple stations. That's what I need. All my 
If you're a brother out here who have experience doing radio promotion, you ain't janky, hit me up, man. Let's let's chop it up. Let me see if we can do business. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm throwing another bone to some brothers because there's a lot of white cats I can go to. You understand? But I'm like, damn. All these niggas in radio, y'all don't, nobody really knows how to really work the promotions like they should. You know, I go to the other man really as a last resort. You understand? Just like with the group, like with, with our group, there was some, you know, we, we got different races of musicians in there, but the reason why is because, hell, a lot of brothers flaked out. A lot, man, I had a, I had a couple of drummers, brothers. My keyboard player, he's black. He recommended one dude, one brother who, who just moved to L.A. from Chicago. And this brother was like, oh, man, hell yeah, man, I'm down, man. Let's do this shit. Hell yeah, man. Let's... He was all gung-ho. And then when it came to coming to rehearsal, man, my car had, you know, th that nigga had every excuse on the planet. Man, some had came up. Another nigga, hey, man, I want you to come on down. All right, I'm down, I'm down. Time for rehearsal. Man, the church called. They want me to play at the church. Oh, man. You dig? <laughs> it was niggas. That shit. So, look, you got to go to other folks. Other folks are right there, ready, thorough, on time, ready to get it in. We got to stop slipping. We got to stop slipping. Now, the people in my group now, thorough. On time, thorough. No excuses. That's, that's what it is. Man, man, man. Got to have your business straight. Absolutely. You got to definitely have your business straight. You like my video? Shout out to that. Much respect. So I got Miss Love, she's a mod. So again, all my dudes out there, you work in radio, or you you connected, you got radio promotion skills, or you know someone in our community who are who's skilled at radio promotion, hit me up, let me chop it up with them. If not, I gotta hit that other option. You dig? Yes, we're gonna still get a show tomorrow. I'm gonna do a show tomorrow. Speaking of radio, I'm gonna talk about you know, the radio interview I did down in Miami, I'm going to really break that down. I'm going to really get deep into that. Shout out to Damoon, Damoon R.A. Shout out to that brother. What, what's Helltown? What what number is that? You thought I did an interview? No, me and Miko, Miko Grimes was worth kicking it. That's my homegirl. I love Miko. Oh, yeah, the Mink Slide shirts, I might put them on sale tomorrow. I'm glad you, you brought that up. I might put the Mink Slide shirts on sale tomorrow because we got them. So everybody tomorrow, tune in to the, um, the live show and also go to MinkSlide.com and we'll have the shirts available tomorrow. You say Miss Love is fine. What she look like? Let me look at her thing. But we might have, well, we're not might, we're definitely going to have the Mink Slide shirts available tomorrow. You dig? So that's going to pop off. All right, but let me get up out of here. It's been real. We're going to chop up some real good game tomorrow on tomorrow night's show. And tomorrow night, we're going to have, yes, Miko is definitely going to be on ISM Radio. Um, tomorrow night. I'm going to talk about that interview. Hopefully my damn eyebrows grow back some more. My eyebrows get back on fleek. <laughs> yes, mothers are definitely a blessing. Absolutely. Absolutely. What up, everybody? <laughs> but, um, yeah, tune in tomorrow, um, 7 p.m. Pacific time. That's 10 o'clock um, East Coast time. All right. Yes, Sister Tubman. I thought I modded you already, Sister. So tomorrow, all my mods be here tomorrow night, 10 p.m. East Coast time, 7 p.m. West Coast time. It's going to be a deep show tomorrow. Uh, we're going to take our time breaking down that interview I did down in Houston, not Houston, in, in Miami, 
we we got to really take our time and dissect this thing. Y'all going to see a, a, a level of coonery. Y'all just got to hear it. You got to hear it to kind of really get the full experience of it. So it's going to be fun. We're going to have a good time tomorrow night. Um, again, thank everybody. I thank y'all for the Melanoid Ministries donations and uh, Super Chat contributions. Much respect to you. Um, yeah, yeah, we got, we got, what's up, James Earl? I see you. You say, what's up, jackass? You say, you know I'm getting my eyebrows arched? No, nigga, it's your mom's breast milk singed my eyebrows when I was licking her down. That's what that is, nigga. Your mom has acidic breast milk, and that's what it is. It fucked up my eyebrows. You musty motherfucker. Since you want to talk greasy. About my eyebrows, nigga. What's up, sexy girl? I see you. All right, y'all, man. Tomorrow night, <laughs> I'm going to see y'all right here. Y'all have a good night, man. Y'all be good.